now let's complete with the uh, <coughs> third phase which is the bug detection and we actually have two techniques for bug detection the first technique is called policy based bug detection and repair what we do here basically is that given the sanitizer function uh, we and given a policy written as a regular expression we check if the sanitizer function confirms to the policy if it does confirm then we return yes. If it does not confirm, uh, if it does not confirm to the policy, then we return a bug and a counterexample. So the counterexample actually is a string that is returned. It is in the output that is returned by the sanitizer function, but it is not in the language of the policy. So we also generate a patch such that the newly patched function confirms to the policy. We actually use two policies, a minimum policy and a maximum policy. The minimum policy describes the uh, smallest set of strings that you must accept, that the function must accept and uh, return. Okay, so this is this, the least that the, must, the, the function must accept and return. This is an example for a zip code uh, minimum policy. So if you have an input of type zip code, then you must accept and return uh, this five, uh, uh, string that contains five digits. You cannot reject this string. Okay? The maximum policy describes the maximum set of strings that you are allowed to accept and return. Anything outside of the maximum policy is bad. It's considered to be bad string. And this is an example of a zip code <coughs> maximum uh, policy. Now what we do is that, given these two policies, we check if the function confirms to the maximum policy. If it doesn't, if, it's, if, it, if ac it accepts and returns strings outside of the maximum policy, then we say that the function is actually under constrained because the function accepts and returns things that it should not do. On the other hand, given the minimum policy, we check the function if it confirms to the minimum policy and if it doesn't confirm, which means that there are strings in the minimum policy that the function uh, rejects, then we say that the function is over constrained. So notice that although we use regular expressions here to write policies, and we, at the same time we may use regular expressions to do the validation, um, the reason for writing policies is that we write the two policies. Okay? So your function can return inputs in between these policies. Okay? So <clears throat> we analyze uh, 23 validation functions from books and tutorials, and we found 10 maximum policy violations where the functions were under constrained and three minimum policy violations where the functions were over constrained. Uh, we, we apply the uh, policy based uh, bug detection to find vulnerabilities, basically to find cross site scripting and SQL injection vulnerabilities. In this case, we used attack patterns. And uh, an attack pattern basically is the negation of a maximum policy. So we said that the maximum policy describes the maximum set of strings that you that a function can accept and return. So in this way you would describe it with the other way. So we said that this is the set of strings that are bad that you should not uh, accept. So if we go back to here, the, the attack pattern describes this gray area. It says that you must not accept and return any string in this gray area. So, as an example of an attack pattern, is this regular expression. Any input, uh, any string, sorry, any string that contains less than script is bad string. So, let's look at the buggy function. This is a sanitization function that's extracted from a real world PHP web application. So, what does this function do? Let's apply it to some input. This is a benign input. It's a good input, we call it. Although it looks suspicious, but it's still good. It doesn't result in any vulnerability. Given this input, the sanitization 
the replace operation here by the developer is actually going to make the benign input convert it into a bad input. This is very bad. Instead of actually converting bad inputs into good inputs, the developer did the other way around. And then the input is output. So this is a cross-size scripting variability. Why? Because the developer forgot to escape the dash. And the dash here is a special symbol saying that uh, <coughs> the characters from dot to at are included in the character class. The developers wanted to delete all the characters that are not in this character class. But since less than is in this character class, it's not going to be deleted. How do we detect this vulnerability? What we are going to do is that, given any input, okay, assuming any input to the function, as we did in the previous video uh, with the analysis, assuming sigma star is input, we are going to compute uh, over approximate the post image of the function. And this is basically the automata that represents the uh, uh, output, all possible output of the function. As an example, this is an example output string that can be returned by the function URL semicolon uh, space and foo and slash s here represents a space, the white space character. So this is string in the output of the function. Now, given an attack pattern, and I simplified it a little bit so that the automata does not become complex. So this attack pattern describes all strings that contain this then. For example, foo less than bar. This is considered bad. Uh, uh, bad uh, uh, string by the attack pattern. We intersect the two and we check if the intersection is not empty. In our case, the intersection actually is not empty. What does this mean? This means that there is a string that is output by the function and at the same time it is considered to be bad because it's in the language of the attack pattern. So, now, if we find this, if we find that the intersection is not empty, then we report a bug. The next phase is repairing this bug automatically. What do we do? Given the bad output, we use the pre-image computation to compute the pre-image. What is the pre-image here? What does it represent? It is the bad input. It is basically the input that resulted in this bad output. Given this, uh, uh, this is the automata, we call it the vulnerability signature DFA, and we call this set the vulnerability signature. It's the signature of the vulnerability. It is the input values that if you give them to the function, they will result in a cross-site scripting vulnerability according to the attack pattern. So, <clears throat> now what we want to do is that we want to remove this mapping. So this input is mapped to bad output, okay? We want to map this input to something else. Either we reject the input, this is one strategy, so block this input, and we can do this by simulating this automata. So we output code that would simulate the automata on the input. So if the input is accepted by the automata, it means it is in the language of the automata, which is the bad language, the bad inputs. And if we find out this, then we just reject the input. But <laughs> We want to actually sanitize the input. It's maybe better to sanitize the input. Many developers, they do not use validation to get rid of security problems. Not always, but you find lots of developers using sanitization operations to get rid of security problems. And this is what we want to do here. We want to sanitize the input by uh, mapping it to good output. Okay. The question is, <coughs> How can we do this? So intuitively, you would say delete less than from the input. This way, you are going to sanitize the input. Okay. So this is a simple example. The question is, how do we automate this process? So what we are going to do is that we are going to do to use MinCut uh, algorithm. This is an algorithm that we developed to deal with this problem to generate a patch automatically for sanitizing the input. So the min-cut algorithm basically takes the vulnerability signature and then it tries to find, it finds the transitions that would separate the start state, the initial state, from all accepting states. This is the initial state, okay, and this is the accepting state. 
We want to separate the two of them. We want to cut the graph, okay? Remove all the transitions that would uh, uh, allow a path from the transition, from the initial state to the uh, accepting state. Then, when we find these transitions, we take all the characters on these transitions and delete them. So this is basically the min-cut algorithm. And this is the patch that we generate. But we do something more here. We actually first match against the min-cut automata. So if the, automa if the input that we get is bad, then sanitize it. If the input is not in the bad input, uh, if, if the input is not in this set, then don't do anything with it, okay? If the input is in this set, if it matches this automata, and we actually do not match, this is just to simplify, to illustrate things for you, but we actually generate um, a code that would match against the automata itself. If the input matches the, autom the language of the automata, if it is in the language of this automata, then we, we delete less than from the input. We sanitize it. And here are some examples. The first uh, input is actually good input, so it's not going to be affected by the new patch. The second input contains less than. In the original uh, function, we are going to get this output. The output URL, colon, space, foo, less than, bar. We're going to get this output. But in the new uh, patched function, we're going to delete the less than from the output. This is another input. And the reason here I wanted to show, uh, what I wanted to show here is that we actually delete all less thans from the input. So if you give a string, we delete all the less thans in the string, not just one less than, which some people may uh, get from this. Okay, so this is the uh, first verification technique that uh, we use. The second one is the differential verification technique, and we're going to leave this for the next uh, video.